This is WOC Channel 6, Davenport, Iowa, the recognized leader in television news. Now, News Center 6 at 6 with Don Ryan, Andrea Zinga, Sports with Tom Cornelis, and John Collins Weather. This is News Center 6. The futures of about 1,200 workers are still unclear tonight. That after today's announcement of the closing of the case plants in Rock Island and Bettendorf. The uh, announcement was not altogether unexpected. It was another body blow for the Quad Cities economy, which has suffered many such blows in the past several years. The Quad Cities plant closings, along with another closing at Terre Haute, Indiana, are part of the case company plan to reduce its North American manufacturing capacity by 25%. Company spokesman David Burkhardt said the closings are necessary because of the sluggish farm and construction equipment markets. Case Purchase International uh, Harvester Agriculture Implement Operations in January of 1985. And a few months later, Case President Jerome Green hinted at a possible consolidation or plant closing. All right. Thank you, Kim. Well, things could be brewing as far as the weather goes as well. That's right. John Collins says there's some tough weather out in the central part of the state of Iowa. We'll have the latest from him just ahead. Well, not only a big news day, but a big weather day. It's turned into that. Some storms have just kind of, boom. Out of nowhere. <laughs> blown up. Well, not out of nowhere, exactly, yeah, but they've just blown where? up. Right. Uh, from Bettendorf, things are getting cloudy and a little breezy out there. 83 the high, 54 the low. Those are the readings here at the studio, unofficially today. We had a little showers uh, mostly north of us this morning in the area, but only a trace here in town. And right now, conditions look like this. At the airport, officially 83 here in town. At the news center, it's 84 degrees. So we're still holding on to that heat. 46% the humidity. That's come up. The barometer fairly steady, but on the low side, we have an east wind, and the Mississippi continues a very slow rise here in the Quad Cities. Lenore McGuire, our sky watcher at DeWitt, there at 72 degrees. Now, clouds have moved in there and brought the temperatures down a bit. At Rockford, 71, Burlington, 83, Dewey Green, our sky watcher at Geneseo. The sun still shines there, and the temperature is 81 degrees. Now we want to take a look at the radar and watch these storms develop. From about 4.15 until now, we'll take a time lapse and show you how these storms are moving into the area. The storms back around the Des Moines area. Uh, produced a couple tornadoes uh, near Des Moines and near uh, Newton. No reports of damage there. Here's the latest uh, radar right now. We see the line. I'm down in the 60-mile range at this point. It's the lighter shadings, the key counties around us. This is an area of showers in the eastern end of our ground clutter. The rest of this is ground clutter, so nothing significant. A little heavier scattered shower and thunderstorm activity now just east of the Iowa City area. From Mount Pleasant down to near the Burlington area, we also have some. Watch flashing in the greens and yellows and a little red in there, up to level 5. Some pretty good little thunderstorm cells, gusty winds, hail, and a lightning possible with this. And it's all moving this way, slowly but surely. So we'll be watching that for you this evening. Now, let's take a look at the satellite. First, what's coming our way? Here's the cloud mass that's producing the pretty good thunderstorms associated with warm air moving in, trying to push the cold air out. You can see the line developing there. These bright clouds are the ones from the Mount Pleasant area down near uh, Burlington. All right, so we're still kind of in the clear, except for this little area of cloudiness from just north of the Quad Cities. That's what DeWitt got into the clouds and cooled down with this evening. So this area is producing heavy thunderstorm activity, and we also have along a cold front, some very heavy thunderstorms, and severe weather is expected out here this evening, too. And we do have a tornado watch to talk about in just a second or so. But let's take a look at the surface map. Here's that warm front now. The cooler air is being pushed to the north. The warmer air is trying to come in. You can see these temperature readings at Chicago and Minneapolis and Bismarck, as opposed to the 70s and 80s we see down at St. Louis, Kansas City, and Omaha. Here's that little string of thunderstorms developing ahead of the warm front. Then out to the west, we have that stuff with the cool front. Now, the situation is going to be very much the same tomorrow, but we do want to touch on that tornado watch. That will be in effect until 11 o'clock this evening. This is our county map. Here's the Quad Cities. Iowa City is the only county in our viewing area involved in this. Till 11 this evening, a tornado watch. It moves to the north and west. Most of Iowa is inside that watch. Now, here's our forecast. Rarely cloudy, scattered thunderstorms near 60 to low. Southeast winds 10 to 15. Could get gu gusty, though, in those thunderstorm cells. Variably cloudy tomorrow. Thunderstorms, best chance in the afternoon and evening tomorrow. Again, there could be some heavy ones with a high expected around 80 degrees. So we're going to have a stormy couple of days here. In fact, the thunderstorm chances will continue into Saturday, but by Mother's Day, we hope to move everything out 
dry the air out a little bit and cool things down to near normal by Sunday or so. And then Monday and Tuesday, we'll start bringing those temperatures and humidities and everything else back up once again. Oh, boy. At least we hope we can clear it out from others. Well, like July. Then. We'll watch the tornado watch for you. Thank okay. You. It was a good day for the Chicago Cubs. They managed to turn things around. And Tom Cornelis has highlights coming up. They played ball today. They and did. The diehard should be happy. Yes, showed some showed some character too. Comeback character, we call it. That's what the Cubs showed today. Spotting the Dodgers a quick four nothing lead, and then coming back with four of their own in the fifth on their way to a six five victory. Sean Dunstan sparkling with the bat and the glove. First of all, time that the plants will close in Bettendorf and Rock Island. And on the international scene, you'll we'll learn about the nuclear fires still burning in the Soviet Union. And of course, John will update us on the weather as it happens, so be here at 10. Good night. This is WOC Channel 6, Davenport, Iowa, the recognized leader in television news. Now, News Center 6, with Don Ryan, Paula Sand, Sports with Tom Cornellis, and John Collins Weather. This is News Center 6. It's an all too familiar story, and tonight in the Quad Cities, we bring you this special edition of News Center 6 to tell it all to you. It's a story that begins with an ending, with a leaving of a closing. It is a story we have told you before with different names and at different times. In January of 1985, we heard that the giant Rock Island Farmall plant would not be included in Tenneco's purchase of International Harvester and that it would close. Today, we heard something similar. 